So, uh, if you want to go to the workshop, I forgot to mention that Mitch Oldman is waiting for uh, people. And uh, now we have here Daniela Schiffer and Markus Schulz from uh, Changers, and they will uh, explain their business model with the solar chargers they built and explain their startup and how it works and uh, what the problems are regarding open hardware, for example. Well, thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, so I would just quickly, quickly go. Um, we started Changers in 2010. We worked there before that and uh, basically um, in a, in a communication and an advertising background and uh, in 2010 we got this idea and well started building hardware without actually not much of the background and so yes our target is to enable everybody to produce his own energy and to use his own energy and to contribute against climate change and therefore we developed the hardware a solar hardware uh, consists of two parts, um, a solar module, it's uh, a flexible, right. lightweight, and about a, f a sheet of the size of an A4 sheet of paper. It's flexible and it produces about, pardon? And it produces about four watt peak. Um, and this fits perfectly to your lifestyle. It's mobile and it's light and you can right. fix it on Basically. every on every glass with two rubber suckers with the eyelets and uh, you can use it mobile on your backpack by biking. And the energy that the solar module produce is stored in our second device. This is a solar battery and this battery stores the, the, the energy that comes from the solar panel. And with this battery, you can charge all your devices like uh, mobile phones, uh, batteries, um, well, basically cameras. Everything you, you can charge via USB, more or less, yes. And uh, the battery has a capacity of 4,400 milliampere,s and uh, so in about like optimum conditions of so full sunshine, in about four hours you can charge this device, and uh, then you have like two 1.5 to two times charging a smartphone, or you give a, a tablet PC like you saw before, you give a boost and can charge it up to I would say 50%. So it's quite a powerful device we, 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 have, we have built here. Um, and so the, but that's, that's not everything. So there are many hardware, solar chargers out there on the market. So actually what makes our device special or what is the core of our idea is that um, we do not only store the energy you have produced and give it up to your mobile devices, but actually we also do store the data of your energy production. So when did you produce how much energy? It gets connected to your user ID, to your, uh, um, it, it gets a timestamp, and this can then be uploaded to a changer's community. So we have the possibility to actually share your data about your energy production and by using this device actually your carbon dioxide save savings. Here you have a quick insight into the into uh, the, how the how the platine is. So actually, it's it's much much more than just a charger. Actually, we are always joking and saying actually it's like a mini PC with like really large batteries. So um, and the idea actually is to to motivate people to, in, to in, in a playful manner, in a positive manner, to keep on using this device. So as Mark has already said, our goal is to really start, yeah, what, what do you say, motivate people to, to start producing and using their own energy. And we see this as a very first step. So this is called starter kit. It's like really like the first thought you have. And um, yeah, to, to just, uh, find a way to have users on a, on a longer, longer term. Yeah, and it has a lot of features inside. It has, for example, an active MPP tracking. Uh, that means you can change in the future the, the panel, use different uh, solar technologies. Right. It has a broad 
uh, voltage entrance from 5 voltage to up to 25 voltage. And, uh, it, and as well, the interface show, gives you a lot of information. For example, it shows the, um, if you charge with your, with your solar panel, then the blinking of the, the, the LED is in relation of the amount that, of energy that comes in. And a lot of other features are in this little device. Right. Exactly. So, and um, actually what, what we, what this, or what, what is one of the core features actually is that it can differentiate the different energy types. So this device can um, differentiate if you really have gathered solar energy or if you are just put, having your device on the plug. Why is this so important for us? Because, and this is actually something that um, I will just quickly say, so by producing your own energy, by using it, by sharing it and uploading it to our community, you save, you, you do something very, very meaningful for the community, which is you save carbon dioxide. And what we do is for each gram of carbon dioxide you have saved, you get credits. And with these credits, actually, then you can redeem this on our, on our platform for partners and, and who in some kind are um, sustainable or have something to do with sustainability. So, May it be either that the product is sustainable or that the way they handle resources is sustainable. And uh, what we try to do is actually push from two sides. So from the one side, go into the energy production, and from the other side, um, or, or invite companies to just keep on producing this product and show them that actually people care and are interested in this. Um, so we will now just go quickly and, and show a bit of the website and stuff and then move on to actually what, what the vision and the thinking behind is and why we're actually invited here because we very much think that the vision behind um, um, Changers has a lot to do with the open source philosophy. So, right, you can see here Marcus profile and um, so we have like very basic game mechanics going there. So you have ranking, you get batches, you can see the statistics of the energy production, you have the most active user, the most active city. So actually the moment you measure data, you start competing. And uh, of course then we, we try to, uh, to, to uh, use social um, network so you can share and, and, and face on Facebook or Twitter your data and just let people know that actually you're just doing something. So the, the idea always is to, to invite people to let them know that I care and that I just got active. So it's not about just talking but like really doing something. Yeah, and to make contribution against climate change measurable and visible and therefore, yeah, competable. Right, exactly. And, okay, so then on the one side you have the community, which is rather the playful thing, and then here you have the marketplace. Actually, we call it the, the first platform for private carbon dioxide trading. So, because what actually what you do is you have all these different kind of offers and these companies accept your CO2 savings as a reduction or as a full price. And actually, we always uh, come up with, uh, this is what I would say is really uh, like our Porsche of, of offers. So what we managed is that that's a um, hotel in, in Switzerland and uh, they are very, very eager to, to um, uh, foster on a, on a sustainable way the mountains. So they are really looking for a sustainable or, or for for customers who, who care about sustainability and they got really excited about this and they were like, okay, you know what? We're going to give you hotel rooms, and basically it's apartments, it's apartments for, for persons for, for, for free. And we go like, whoa. So actually it, it really starts at people that, that also companies actually see a value in, in, in what, we, what, what we do. And um, actually they managed to really mess up our credit system because the, the offer they gave us was so much more valuable than everything else that I, we had really pr trouble to, 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 to have, a, have a relevance in the, in the credit system. So that was quite interesting too, to see, okay, what kind of value does any credit have? And so right round about now, it's, it's like one change of credit is about 10 cent, like a euro cent, which re if, you, if you look to, to normal energy, 
uh, you have, I think, um, um, normal, normal grid energy is one kilowatt hour, which is a thousand times a watt hour is 24 cent, 25 cent. Now it's getting more expensive, but so this energy we're gathering is in incredibly more valuable or, or it's given it bigger value. It's not because it's not the energy we're counting, but actually the change of behavior you have. And um, yeah, well, so for... The next step is to make it mobile and to make as well the exchange of the changer's credits uh, mobile. So right. you produce uh, 20 changer's credits QR barcode and you scan the barcode and, uh, and uh, yeah, and so exactly. you can exchange that. So actually we really try to get the credits on the road and really have them as Marcus said, exchangeable, so mode, it's exactly, yeah. so to so have them offline and and I think there is where we are heading to and which is, uh, I would say, the first step into this, this vision we have. We would love to see what happens if we manage to really create a digital currency which is backed by renewable energy. So really have these credits working as a currency, a currency which, which uh, can be exchanged in between us, which can be which is accepted already by, by companies. And um, so we, I think one thing which is quite important is that, or, or which, which is very interesting about it, talking about Bitcoins just before, is that every single one can, can, can just produce their own credits and produce their own energy. So it's a decentral system. And, um, but you don't, you don't, you, you, in, in very parallel system because all credits are equal and all, in every single credit is backed by half a gram of carbon dioxide and this value is constant. And, um, and this value is for all of us of, in the world. It's a social value. Right, right, exactly. So, and this is, this is something that, that as, as, as we just said, we, we basically were very much at the beginning. We are now for, about a year on the market and um, are, are trying to, to, to sell the, this device. So we are now selling in Europe and the United States. We have a test market in Japan. And um, so slowly we're just trying to like really build up the system where, where like everybody can really go and create their own currency and start accepting them. So our vision would be that in, 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 in what, I don't know, five years, 10 years, whatever, you go into the, 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 the sub, subway in, in, in Japan and you can, you, you have, you have like a, some, some coin system and you just basically pay the, 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 the sub, uh, subway with, uh, with, with your credits. So it's, it really becomes like a currency. And I think that's that's like one big 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 goal we are having, and actually that's that's where we're quite close with with the systems and how we would evolve this, and then actually what we what we did or or, or through this building of the company, what happened is that we we thought a lot of how you handle behavior, how you move on with this. So I would just like to invite you to just follow us and go one step further. So be, be, see this currency created not only by your energy behavior or your change of energy behavior, but, but basically by any, any behavior which is, uh, how would you say, which is uh, valuable for society. So this is like a very broad uh, word, and of course there, there's like lots of discussion, okay, what's valuable, what's not, but basically what... what um, um, the mathematically expression for what we do or what the device do, does is uh, that it measures the not happening of an event. And if the event does not happen in the future, we save opportunity costs and we save these costs for society. And this is a system that we can use as well for different other activities. Right. For example, you, you take the, your bicycle instead of your car, or you use the open transport, or you have your, your, your health plan, or whatever it is. So you, you, you save opportunity costs for society. And this is the, the, the value system exactly. we are based on. Right. And so then we thought, okay, actually this is something that, that can really be, be working also on a, on a 
social level means a today's work and that's what this graphic actually does I just give my time and my my work which actually is what but that's 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 a side mark I give my time and I and my my, my work capacities and I get a salary back and um, um, so I and th and a future of what we think will happen or is already starting to happen is that you will get your your wage basically based on your behavior. So if you behave in certain manners which are positive for our own, our, our, the total of us as a society, you will get more than if you do not, if you don't do this or if you do not do, do certain things. So that's. Um, Quite interesting thought, and actually that's where we where we were were, were talking with with Sebastian a few months ago, and uh, actually also talking about the topic of open open software, open hardware, and um, it was kind of interesting to see that actually the system we have or the, the the hardware we have should be closed because we need to have a safe or we think we need to have a safe environment and a, and, a, and a secure environment for gathering the credits. So you will have to have the, 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 trust, the trust in that the creation of the credits is, um, is or cannot easily be faked. But the, the, the vision and, and what we actually, what is the, the surplus on, on changers has many, many things to do with, with open source because what, actually what, what open source is about is just to, to share your knowledge and to just to, to do something more than just for money and to just uh, actually to, 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 to keep on evolving or working on something. And that's, that's uh, an idea that, that really ca caught our interest. So we are very much in the beginning of, of thinking where, where this could lead us, and, and this is just like really very, very open what I'm saying here. Yeah, open source is more or less about learning, participating, and improving, and that's something we, we match as well. It's about what we, what we target, hmm. improving society, improving the system. Right, right. Exactly, and, and... Creating awareness. Right. <laughs> right. So that's, um, um, I think, very much the, the idea of changers. I would say we just, we just open up the discussion and, and see if there are, are some questions or even a bit, a bit of input. I'm very, very keen to just, just uh, see whether there are connections or not, perhaps even if we are wrong and there is a possibility to get this as open as possible and still be able to gather... To, to, to create these credits on a, on a safe basis. So I'm, I'm very, very curious here. So I would say thank you very much here. Thank you. <laughs> so, any questions? Hi. Um, I was wondering if you are aware of the transition town movement out of the UK. It might be something that would be interesting to you. Um, basically what it is, is it's a movement based on a, a, an alternative economic model, um, based on being at, at post-production of peak oil. So the idea that we've already gone beyond um, peak oil production in the world and that we need to transition right. um, to alternative sources of energy. Um, it started in, in a small village called Totes, in the United Kingdom, and now they're, they're transition towns all over the world. Um, and uh, in the UK, they came up with their own local dollar, the totes note, as an alternative to local economy. Um, and they're, they're, they're basically finding ways of, of being non-dependent on um, alternative sources of, of traditional sources of energy, um, as well as local production, and um, kind of going back to some traditional ways of, of growing local foods, for example, and canning, and people learning how to take care of their own electronic devices and, and things like that. Um, and if you just Google Transition Town, you'll find a lot of information, and that might be an interesting um, place where you could piggyback, because they already have infrastructure set up internationally, um, they might be interested in, in, in talking with you. Absolutely. Is this, uh, how, how big are the communities, or are, are the communities just, or, or is, this, is this like fixed form communities they, 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 they live uh, I, for, I'm, I'm from Canada, so it's, it started with a small village in the UK, so something, I don't remember the, 
the size of the, the village, but it was a pretty hippie village where they were able to control a lot of things. But um, in uh, the eastern part of Toronto, there is. So there, there, are, there are larger cities. Um, Toronto is very much, Canada is very much more car-based. Um, and so these are places where we are very, we are high consumers of, of gas and petroleum products, and we are very significantly contributing to climate change. So these pockets, at least in, in Canada, that are starting, they are trying to do things differently, um, and it's very community-based. Uh, so I, I think it's part of the, the benefits of Transition Town is you, you create what makes sense for where you are. So there's no set model. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Thanks. Thank you. Sounds good. Sounds very, very interesting. Question over there. Hi. Uh, I do have two questions. Um, the first is, did you calculate the embedded uh, carbon dioxide emissions uh, for your product, for your chargers? Oh, yes. Sorry. I always forget that. Um, uh, of course, with the, with, the, with the today's production means you immediately, as, as soon as you do something, you produce carbon dioxide. And uh, what we do right now is um, you can plant with the first 10 credits you gather, you can go to our website and plant a tree. And actually this tree uh, then covers a multiple of the, the, the CO2 footprint, which actually the device plus the solar panel plus the whole hosting of the community does. Uh, why we don't know this as well is actually that um, the the calculating of a carbon dioxide footprint is incredibly expensive and we just preferred to say, okay, we just, before we start using all this money, which we actually do not have, uh, in, in calculating a footprint, we just start planting trees and, and, and uh, doing something and uh, being sure that it's a multiple of what it's being used. But um, of course, yeah, we, we, we really try to give the hardware CO2 to neutral to the users but um, yeah, yeah we, we, we produce, we, we, of course, we, we produce CO2 when we, when we get Sounds it. Sounds nice. Um, and the second question is, um, so you say you have to keep your system closed uh, so people can't counterfeit credits, but I'm pretty sure if there's enough reward for counterfeiting credits, people will eventually come up with a way to do it. Um, so what do you say to this? Well, actually, it's, uh, um, I would say every hardware, every software that is being built can be also cracked. I mean, there is like no security system which is not being cracked if it's made by humans. So that's my thesis. What we do is actually we have uh, a set of different controlling and, and, and secur security things. So we have a, um, on the hardware, on, on the platine itself, there is the, how the data is being saved, how the data is being transported from the hardware to the community. This is on a very heavy encryption. Yeah. And um, actually, we, and, and then of course, on the database, if somebody produces 200 watt hours in one hour, I know that there is something not working well. So I don't, I don't think that there is like the one security measure you can take, but you have to go from different points and just be as, as, as uh, see that what is what is wahrscheinlich um, what, what, what is feasible and what, what, what is not and then react up on this and un until now actually it worked it worked quite well I think we had with two people who started did we yeah. and actually we tried out ourselves and it's, it's it ex Im immediately pings so it's 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 quite for the, for the moment it's quite visible to us okay thank you are there more questions okay Uh, I was wondering if you'd uh, kind of looked into other alternative kind of currency systems as well, such as such as Bitcoin, and see if you. Could, I mean, it probably wouldn't work in its current form, but whether you could kind of combine the two and bring it into a bigger system. Well, it's always. I mean, the the the, the idea of cooperation is, I think, is, is always meaningful. I think it's um, talking about bitcoins. I am not a very a very big friend of the the way they got. They, they are being carved. So on the one side you have like this huge uh, energy source, you need to carve them. On the other side you have basically like the snowball system, so the first on top get more than the other ones. And I, I, we just, we looked a bit into digital currencies, but actually this, this kind of currency idea just, just evolved. And what we try to make sure is that actually 
the currency always is backed by a value. So it has a real value of a carbon dioxide saving in it. And I think this is this is like the main idea what we what what we what we thought of when we looked at other currencies. Yeah. I think Do you think you are really going to make a real difference in terms of global CO2 emissions? Because when I look at your website, you said you have saved 73.7 uh, .7 kilograms of CO2. And when you estimate, let's say, the CO2 emissions <coughs> for a single flight from Berlin to New York, for one passenger, it's uh, 740 kilograms of CO2. And I see it's like, uh, so as far as I can tell, your complete uh, CO2 savings from changers devices have produced, have saved only one tenth of the CO2 emission per passenger from a Berlin to New York flight. So. Uh, what are your plans? Like, do you see the changers device as more like, like a symbolic token of inspiration for people to start thinking about energy production, or do you have uh, bigger plans to make uh, larger CO2 savings? So, so first thing, uh, we are very proud about the 70 kilograms, <coughs> and uh, I think about 149,000 watt hours produced by our users. That's and you must imagine for. It, for a smartphone, you use about 10 watt hours. So this is really this is behavior we measured, and uh, this is behavior we changed. And you get in contact with something, uh, with 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 energy for the first time, and uh, this is for us a big value. And then we recognize that people who get in contact with with energy production, that they as well be aware in the next purchase of buying an electronic device mm -hmm. or, or decide to, to travel by train or by, by, by airplane. And we got as well a good feedback of our users from this. And I think we, we can't save the world by our own. That's, it's, it's, a, it's a small step, but it's a step that targets your, your behavior, your awareness. So, sort of, yeah. It's a sign, I mean, yeah. But by actually doing something, so that's right. Um, shouldn't we be building 400 nuclear power plants in Germany? If you really believe in CO2 being a, a danger to the climate, then we should eliminate the CO2 as fast as we can and build nuclear power plants. Uh, I think that. If the nuclear power plants wouldn't be the solution for that. I mean, you, we would say that, that CO2 is, or, or too much CO2 right now is a threat. I would give this as a, as a given um, as far as, as, as studies and results are, but to not to go into this discussion, the problem with, with nuclear energy is, okay, it saves CO2, but actually all the waste and all the troubles it brings, unsolved troubles actually it brings to society is just, so much more damaging and harm, harming that uh, I, I couldn't find any use in, in doing so. So there are, I mean, there are other other forms of, of producing energy, and so we should rather go into this. And the, the society again has to bear the cost for the for the of all the waste and the all moment, the uh, yeah. demolition and all the things. So I mean, it's not even it's not even solved where where yeah. to store. So it's it's I don't think that's that that would be a reasonable way to go. No. I think that Germany is very rich and can afford to like pay 400 billion to replace four power plants with solar and wind, but the rest of the world, there are 7 billion people now, by 2050 it will be 13 billion people who all want to live like we, they want to have clean water, medicine, education, heating, washing machines and so on. So you can imagine that the, the power that we need is going to be tenfold of what we need today. So a solution that others can't afford is no solution for the future. Um, I think there are, there are two, two misunderstandings here. So what we, what we present here is not like the global solution for energy uh, problems. So what we, what we do actually is we invite, we target Western, well, like Western consumers to just get aware of their energy production. So it's, 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 it's a bit different. So I'm, I'm not coming here and saying, okay, we just have the, the solution for all our energy troubles would be a bit stretched. On the other side, I'm pretty sure that we will manage and, and renewable energies are getting better and better and there's lots of people working on it. It's just a matter of time that actually we will be able to use them also on a broader level. And of course we will have an energy mix for, for quite a long while, but at a certain time we will not be able to to keep on like we do right now. It's, um, 
Uh, I just want to share one thought. Uh, you, in the last answer to the last question, you said, um, I said something. Uh, we should not uh, forget that here at the conference, we all know uh, our, our technical stuff. We know what ampere hours are, what watt hours are. So uh, I think this device is suitable for the average user who has no idea what one, what hour is to see how many what hours his mobile devices need and to get get some rough estimation what power actually is. So I think that's what is really suitable for and to to make people aware of their behavior. So I think that's that's one of the points. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Hey. Thank you. Uh, next will be. Uh